Okay, um, good evening, everyone. I trust that our day has been good and um, we've been enjoying ourselves. Thank you for all the good messages, good way messages that you sent to me when I was down. God bless you all in Jesus' name. So we're going to start immediately. I'm going to wait for people to join. We're going to start. There must be a reward for punctuality. Um, I hope those who are having issues with um, submitting assignments will, I mean, are here right now. Because the first thing I want to show us is how to submit an assignment. An assignment just like the one that um, I've given to us that um, some of us are finding difficult to submit. So I'm going to start with showing us how to submit that. And I hope um, it will help those who didn't know how to submit assignments to know how to do that. So we we'll kick off with that this evening. So let me share my screen. So basically, um, this is what we would see on our own um, page when we log into the classroom. We are usually landed on the stream um, tab, all right? So what you expect to do, you will see the assignment on the stream tab, telling you the assignment that is posted, or you go to classwork to view the assignment that is posted. The assignment that was posted that I want to show you how to submit is the one that is under the coding assignment. Okay, that's coding assignment 01. So when you see this, you're expected to scroll down, you see the file, all right? That is, that's, if there's a file in the assignment, you see it there. Now this is the file where the code that I said you should review is. You can also go ahead to say view assignment, which will bring you here, all right? In this page, the file is located here. So what is expected that you should do with this particular assignment? I said, please study the HTML code and follow the instruction below to edit it. Once you have finished editing your code, submit it. So it's better to just open this up. This is what I did. I clicked on the file here. It's under your work. I clicked on it. So what you're supposed to do is to copy the entire code, copy. Then you click the back button to go back here. So you copy, you've copied that code, it's residing in your clipboard. So you go to the Visual Studio code. Uh, you come to Visual Studio code and um, as usual, create a file. So let me just create a new folder here for myself. I call it um, D5, D4. No, it's supposed to be D4. Let me just call it D5 anyway. So D5. So underneath, I'll then put um, a new file. I'll create a new file. Name it assignment. All right. Dot HTML. So it opens up for me. Remember, I've already copied the code. So what I am expected to do here is to paste the code here. So the code has been pasted here. I'll do all the edits I want to do, all right? Once you're done with the editing, save the file by pressing Control S, okay? Or you go to File and then choose Save, okay? So that means it has been saved. You know the location where you saved your file. So you can minimize or close Visual Studio code. All right, then what you need to do next to upload your assignment or to upload your file, you come to add or create button here. You click on it. Now, what you choose here, you choose file. Okay, you choose file because that's what you want to upload. So you select file. So it brings you to this page. All right, click on upload tab here and then click on browse button. Then you need to browse to where you have saved that file. Yeah, yeah. 
it's under the file and this is the file here once you select the file click open so open we then upload the file all right so the file is uploaded once your file is uploaded you click on turn in to submit turn in to submit and then you click turn in again and that's it you've submitted your work and i will see it on my own tab on my own page all right so that is how you submit a file okay how you upload and submit a file so there will be more assignments like this in future and um, this is the way you expect to do it okay um so what i've done i've extended the deadline for that assignment to tomorrow so those of us who have not submitted yet we can go ahead do the assignment i've shown us how to do it and then you can submit your assignment again okay so i think um any question i don't think there will be any question on this anyway so we can then move to today's lesson okay so we start at uh, on chapter nine on the last class today we continue from here chapter 10 all right so we continue from chapter 10 okay so chapter 10 talks about quotations and citations quotations and citations i hope we can all hear me properly i hope i'm loud enough please let me know if i'm not loud enough so that i can start screaming <laughs> okay thank you for that confirmation thank you very much okay so let's proceed So in this chapter, we'll go through block quotes, Q. Okay, block quotes, quotations, abbreviations, address, um, citation, and um, bidirectional um, some objects or so. So these are elements that we're going to look at for this chapter. Okay, and. Um, these elements are a bit, um, to me, kind of funny, but I'm sure I may not be using them, but then they exist in HTML, so it's good that we know <clears throat> about this element, okay? So, of course, we start with um, HTML block quotes. That's for quotes, all right? So the block quote element defines a section that is quoted from another source. Those are usually indent block quotes elements. So let's see what that means. Okay, so what I've done um, while preparing for this class is to create something of sorts. Um, let me just close this preview page for now. So our uh, block load code element, if you look here, this is what it looks like. So you define it with block quotes, then you cite maybe a website, all right? And then, the rest goes like that. So everything is inside the block quotes element here. This is the opening tag and this is the closing tag. So for us to see how it looks like, uh, we, can, we can try to view that in our browser. So I would like to open that um, file in a browser as opposed to uh, me previewing it here. I think that works for me. Settings under the four, so I said here. So I'm going to have to reduce this a bit. So if you look at this, you realize this is the, the block code section. Okay. So you realize that it's been indented. Indentation means it's a bit away from the start line as other text. Okay. So this is it, it has been indented inward. So this is your block quote here. That's what this block quote and this is giving to us. So browsers, we usually indent it. All right. So browsers, we usually indent. So if you are creating a website and you want to do something like this, so you can put it inside a block quote. 
create inside a block quote. And um, that's the way that works. All right. So we come to short quotes or quotations, so short quotations, which is the Q tag. And it defines a short quotation. So browser normally insert quotation marks around these quotations. So let's look at the code for that. We can see an example of the code here so that when you're going through this um, slide, you can start trying this yourself, okay? So an example of the code is here and I want to show you what I did with, um, with in my own Visual Studio code. So this is where I put the short codes. This is it here, this is the opening tag here and this is the closing tag here. What is enclosing between it is this, um, the 1960s with the release, okay? So if we go back to the browser where I have done this already before this class, we would see it here that is quoted. Let me just kind of reduce this a bit. Okay, so we see it here, the 1960 release, and we can see that we have quotations around it. Sorry, we have these quotation marks around it. All right, can't even select the quotation mark. So this quotation mark has been inserted for us because we use these short code tags, okay? These short code tags. So if you're writing a paragraph, you're doing a paragraph, you can quote a section of it, all right? You can quote a, sec a section of it, and that's how that works, okay? So let's go to the next one, abbreviation. This abbreviation, so ABBR tag is used for abbreviations. So this tag defines abbreviations or acronym like HTML, CSS, Mr. Dr. ASAP, and ATM. Making abbreviations can give useful information to browsers, tra browsers, translating, translation systems, and search engines. One of the things that you guys need to understand is that all these tags, they are important to in, in HTML, and that's why they exist. So your browser, your search engines, and all of that, systems like the translation systems use these tags to work okay to give you what you want or to provide to you what you are asking them to do so take for example you're looking for something on the internet and it's an abbreviation so your search engine tries to look for these tags on web pages if it finds these tags then you see them as an abbreviation if that's what you're looking for those are one of the things that will come out first you know, on the search result. So that's the importance of um, look, using these tags. Of course, take for example, this um, short quote. If I want to put quotation marks around anything in my text, I can simply just type it in. I have the quotation mark on the keyboard. I can simply just type it and enclose, enclose the, the um, section of that text in two quotation marks. But HTML provide for us a quote tag which I mean a quotation tag, which is the short quotations. And then that helps your browser to identify that um, section or that string of text as quotation. All right, I hope we are getting what I'm saying. I hope we are getting what I'm saying. So when you, um, da, 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 da. All right. All right, so um, that's abbreviations for you and the code for the abbreviation is what you're seeing an example here below that you are seeing here. All right, the tip here says, use the global title attribute to show the description for abbreviation and acronym when you use, the, when you must, um, goes over it. So if you write this code now, okay, um, and you put your mouse over it, you won't see, I mean, before before you put your mouse over it, you're not going to see this worded organization until you put your mouse over the WHO. That's when you see the World Health Organization. Okay, let me explain the abbreviation tag again. So the abbreviation tag Divine, defines abbreviation. So we're going to see it in action. I'm going to show us now, but okay. You know what you do? 
um, can everybody just create a new file um, in the location that you want to have it? Create a new file, quickly scribble out the HTML, um, what's it called now? Structure, document structure. There's the HTML tag, head tag, body tag, put it together. And then you can type in this code. So I'll give us like two minutes to quickly do that or three minutes to quickly do that right away. I hope we are doing it. Let's uh, do it. If you if you're done, just um, send a message. Say yes in the chat window. Right, Naomi is done. Who else is done? So you type in the code. You see, I'll show us what it's like from my own hand here. So if you are done, just run it in the browser. Then what you will see is WHO. You see the WHO was founded in 1948. So you see that WHO is kind of underlying, sort of. I mean, if that's where your browser is interpreting it anyway. If you place your mouse on the WHO, what you see is World Health Organization. World Health Organization. So after we are finished uh, waiting for others, waiting for others, World Health Organization. So they just give us a few minutes to, to finish up. So I have um, the third person, well done. So, oh, great. So let's continue since I have about four people already done. So let's continue. So that's what it gives to you, um, abbreviation. That's the way ab abbreviation works. So when the mouse is moved over it, um, let me just go to my own browser. So when the mouse is moved over the WHO, you can see like a tooltip you know, it shows World Health Organization. So when somebody is reading your your um, your article, for example, and they come across an abbreviation like this, WHO, and if the person knows uh, HTML, he knows that that can be done, the person will eventually just move his mouse or a mouse over that abbreviation, and then he will see the World Health Organization. So it's a good way of you giving more information to your um, to your reader or to your visitors to your website and even to the browser itself and search engines it's, I mean, themselves. So if somebody is looking for, somebody types World Organization now, the person 
will come across this page in the results because there is what an abbreviation that carries that particular text in there. So let's proceed. Uh, where you have time, you can try the other quotes as well, at least for you to see what it looks like. So let's just proceed there. Thank you. Okay, now we are an address tag. Address tag defines contact information for author slash owner of a document or an article. It defines the contact information, or you, you can use it to define the contact information of an author or owner of a document, okay, or an article. Uh, the contact information can be email address, can be an email address, a URL, physical address, phone number, social media handle, etc. Any information you want to put there that is part of the, the person's uh, contact information. You can use the address tag to present that to your visitors. So the text in the address tag element usually renders in italics and browsers will always add a line break before and after the address element. So what that is saying is that, um, let me, so if you go ahead and write this code now, that is seen on the screen. Just go ahead and quickly write that in a minute. You should be able to finish writing this in a minute. So when you're done, please just send a text, I mean, a chat that you are done. A minute. Okay, we should be done. I want to also advise, if you're not using your full name, please change your name to your full name. Because when I'm marking the attendance, if I don't see your name that you used on Google Classroom, then that means you didn't attend class. Thank you, Bussola, well done. Who else is done? Who else is done? Well done, Naomi. Let's wait for others. One, well done, Esther. Well done, Idiot. Let's chill for others to finish. So, who else is done? I'm waiting for one more person. Okay. Okay, so um, I guess we're going to proceed. I'm sure, that's we do DS as well. Okay, well done, Esther. So um, let me show you what that looks like on my own end here in my browser. So you can see this. These ways we look like. This is what it should look like from your end. This part that I've selected, that's the way yours too should look like, All right? So that's what your address tag does for you, all right? So you see all these tags that we are looking at, that we are, you know, 
going through. One thing I realized while I was going through the lesson is that it's good for us to use those tags for the purpose which they are meant for, all right? For the purpose which they are meant for. Because when you're creating a website and if you don't use those tags correctly, what you find out is your, your search engine optimization begin to have problem. You may not be able to see um, your own website in the right places or in the right ranking like many other websites. So those are some of the things that your search engine optimization uses you know, to try to rank your website, okay? So we move next to site. Now the site tag defines the title of a creative work, e.g. book, a poem, a song, a movie, a painting, sculpture, etc. Now a person's name is not the title of the work, all right? So the text in the site element usually render in italics, usually render in italics. So quickly write this code, as you can see it, quickly write it and then run it in your browser. Let's see what that looks like. Quickly write this code. We have the paragraph, then we have, we have the paragraph opening tag, and then we have the site opening tag, and we have the screen and the site closing tag, followed by, by Edward, Edward Munch, uh, painted in 1893, and then the closing paragraph tag. If you're done, please just say done in the chat window for me. So I'm giving us like 90 seconds to do this. That's so much time anyway, so. Oh, great. So, Matthew, well done. Sam, blessing, well done. Sola, well done. Naomi, well done. Okay, so I have four people, I'll be five already. So, let's proceed. And the way that looks like on my own browser is where's my citation? Okay, yeah, this is my citation here below. So, this is the screen here. I believe that's the way it looks like on your own end, too. If it's looking differently, please let me know. Well done, Esther. If it's looking different, please let me know. All right? So that's what site does. So we move to the next quote session. Now, this one is called bidirectional override. Bidirectional override, BDO. Now, the HTML tag, this BDO tag, is used to override the current text direction current text direction. And what it does is that the text will be written from left to right. The text, not the words now, the text, each letter of the text will now be written from left to, um, I mean, sorry, from right to left. So quickly write this code and run it in your browser. Uh, some of you may start laughing when you see what <laughs> the output is and you begin to wonder, where will I use this stuff? But don't worry, as you continue to gain experience in your coding, you begin to see where you can use it. So quickly write this code for me and let me know when you're done by typing done in the chat window. Okay. Uh -uh. So now you're very fast too, so you're done. That's good. That's good. Well done. So others, write the code, write the code, write the code. So you have just one minute to write the code. Matthew, well done. Well done. So you can see you wait. Um, well done, Esther and Blessing. It's, it, you know, it now printed out the text from the right to the left. 
if you're not careful, you, you will wonder, is this what I wrote? Is this what I typed? You know? So one more person. One more person. So if we look at it here, this is what I type. So this is noun is the name of my, my animal episode or things. Well done, diet. So I'm sure you guys are having seen the same thing from on, in your own browser as well. So it kind of um, rearrange, overwrite the 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 um, what you have written in your code, and well done, Esther. And in your on the browser, it starts to do what do it from the right to left. Okay. So those are the quotation and citation elements that we have in HTML. That's all that we have in HTML when it comes to quotation and citations. So please don't forget them. Um, occasions will come where you have to use them and you, you need to start getting used to all those things. Like I said, it helps your search engine optimization and also helps your browser to know what exactly you are intending to do. So this is just a summary of uh, what we've done. The abbreviation defines abbreviation for ac or acronyms. Address define contact information for the author or owner of a document video. Define text direction. Block code defines a section that is quoted from another source. Site defines the title of a work. And Q defines a short inline quotation. All right. So that is that for chapter 10. Is there any question? Go a question. You can raise your hand or you put it in the chat if you have a question. If there are no questions, we move forward to the next chapter. So in our next chapter, which is chapter 11, look at HTML comments. We will look at comments this time around. And um, you will realize that there's something that's a code that does not appear on the screen on your browser. And that those are comments. Okay. So comments are not displayed in the browser, but they can help document your HTML source code. You can add comments to your HTML source code by using the following syntax. Now pay attention to this syntax very well. There's the opening tag of a comment and there's a closing tag for comments as well. So notice that there's an exclamation mark in the start tag here, okay? And the, the closing tag or the end tag doesn't have the exclamation mark. Only the start tag for comments have the exclamation mark. So anything within this start tag for comments and the end tag for comments will not be interpreted by your browser. It will be skipped. Your browser will skip it, okay? when trying to present your code in the, I mean, to your audience. So comments are not displayed by browser, but they can help you to document your source code. Let's take note of that. And, a, and an example is what we are seeing now with comments, you can place notifications and reminders in your source code. So if you have a code, for example, the assignment I gave to you, or I give you assignment in future, and you want to tell me something within your code, okay? Instead, and you don't want it to show when I run your code, you use comments to do that. So it's like you are making comments on your, I mean, within your code. So as you can see, um, the third line just says, remember to add more information. So maybe you are writing your code and you feel, ah, okay, I still have more information to add in this bit, but I don't want to forget. So you just use your comments to write, Remember to add more information here. So by the time you are reviewing your code, you will see that there's a comment somewhere and then you can then read it and you'll be able to remember, all right? So there are other, other um, <clears throat> uses of, for comments as well. You can use comments to help somebody who is reading your code. For example, myself, I'll be reading a lot of your code soon and um, I'll be able to, when you use comments in your code, I'll be able to understand what you are writing, okay? Please give me a minute.
Okay. Um, yes, may I All right, so let's continue. So it's good to know how to use your comments in your code because it helps people who are reading your code to understand what the code is all about. All right, and each programming language have their own way of, I mean, adding comments to the code. Now you can also use to add content. Like I said, that whatever is within this comment, it will not be shown on your browser. So comments can be used to add content. This can be useful if you want to add content temporarily. So for example, if I come to my VS code here, and I, I'll, I'll ask you to do on your hand too, whatever you want to hide anything. So this abbreviation is what I want to choose to hide now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type this and then exclamation dash dash. Okay. It has already given me the closing part of it. So I'll just cut the closing part and I'll put it at the end here. So this part, once I save this document, this document, control S, and I go to my browser, just take note. You will not see this part again by the time I refresh. So I'm refreshing now. It's gone. So whatever you comment, whatever you, you put within this comment tag, your browser will not show it. Your browser isn't going to show it. So let's take note of that. You can also comment more than a line, okay? So whatever is in, within it, that's what I said. So I'm moving it here, okay? And I want to move this one here. So this old place that is in green will not be seen at all in my browser. They won't be seen at all in my browser. So I'm going to save this control S and I'll open up my browser to check. I'll refresh. You can see that place is gone. So you can also comment multiple lines of, of your code or a single line of your code, or even in between your code, if you don't want it to show. So let's take, for example, I want to comment out, um, that's within this um, block code. I want to comment out just a session of the text, okay? So I'll say maybe from there to here, right there, bam. So this part will not show by the time I run this code. I save Control S, always learn to save Control S. I go back here. What part is that? Let's look at it. Loading in some up to text. So that means this whole part will go away. So I refresh bam, and it's gone. So I wanted to try in your own way. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but in your own way, just try different things from your code, hide some parts, and do all that stuff. So I'll just give you 60 seconds to play to that. On the code you already have, just try an item part just like I did now. So I'll just give you 60 seconds. After that, we'll continue the class. Excellent, Matthew. Well done. Who is done again? You don't need to hide too many things. Just hide one. Yeah, okay. Use the quotation, I mean, the comments one or twice. You should be good. Just want to try it from your hand. Well done, next time, blessing. Well done, Daniel. All right, so let's proceed. Well done, Paul. So let's proceed um, to the next. So I've kind of um, explained all this to us. I need to add content and also that. So another, another usefulness of comments is that you can use it to debug your code. Well done, James, well done, Agola. You can use it to debug your code. So for example, you 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 created um you you wrote your your code and you're running it but it's not running well so you need to debug your code now debugging means um looking for errors and 
trying to correct the errors. That's what debugging is. So it's a process of looking for errors and then you're trying to correct that error, all right? So maybe some of you have heard of that's the, the jargon before that. Ah, let me debug this code. You get That's what it means. You're looking for the errors and then trying to correct the errors that may be existing within your code. So for example, um, you're, you're seeing that your, your HTML is not displaying properly. There may be something wrong somewhere. So you want to now start adding part of the code so that you know where um, there's an error. So as you are reading through, the one that you see is appearing fine. This place is okay. There's nothing wrong with this place. So you can choose to hide it so that it goes off the screen. Then you go to the next um, block of code. Is this one fine? Everything is fine with this one. You hide it. So you fresh your page again. You see what you have left to do. And then you can use that process to eventually detect which area of your code is having that error. Okay, so that's the way to use it to um, try and I mean, to use it within your debugging process, all right? So let's, let's move on. So inline content, comments can be used to hide parts of, parts in the middle of an HTML code. So just like I, I did here, that's what they are trying to tell us. Like I did here, yeah, this part, all right? So that's what they are trying to tell us there. Okay. So we move on. So we're done with comment right there. So that's it, comment's very short, okay? So that's what comment is in HTML. So of course, such questions will be coming out in your quiz and I may be asking you to try it in your code assignment, coding assignment. So go to chapter 12. HTML colors, please, if anybody's distracting you, tell the person to go away. You need to pay attention here. You need to pay attention here. Nobody should distract you. We need to understand these HTML colors and how to use them properly. So tell whoever that may be disturbing you or distracting you to please let you be, you need to concentrate um, for this chapter. All right. So we're ready to go, let's move. So HTML colors are specified with predefined color names or with RGB, X, HSL, RGBA, or HSLA. HTML colors, I mean in HTML, colors can be specified by using their color name, just like we see below, tomato, orange, Dodger blue, medium sea green, gray, slate blue, violet, light gray, and so on. You can actually specify colors like that, like we've done already. Okay. However, there's this interesting part of colors, HTML colors that we are going to still we are going to see as we go on. HTML colors are very, very interesting. It's a very interesting topic. And that's why I want you to pay very good attention. Because by the time you start doing um CSS. Would, would discover that um, there's need to know all these colors and how to mix them up, how to mix them, all right? So we look at background colors first. You can set background colors for HTML elements, just as you can see in this um, code that you can see, you are seeing right now. And I don't need to tell you to write this code. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, okay, we continue. I don't need to tell you to write this code. We've been writing and changing background colors since last week. So maybe when you are doing your personal reading or revision, you can write this. So as you can see in this code, we have this style. Style is what we usually use to, to bring in um, inline CSS. So background color, Doja blue, and that's what is controlling this first part of it. And then we have for the paragraph style, background color, tomato, Lauren Imsom, blah, 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 blah. That's what we have here, all right? So let's move forward. So text color, same applies, style, color, tomato. Da, da, da. So these are the examples you're seeing here. I mean, we've tried this all in our assignments, so should be good to go. Okay. Border color, this is now where I want you to type. Quickly, within the same documents that you have, or you can duplicate, and then let's do this code. 
very quickly, very quickly. You can set border, border colors with the style element, I mean, style attributes, and just say border, <clears throat> giving it a, a size, solid, tomato, solid. I will explain this to us, don't worry. But just write this code. When you're done writing it, please run it in your browser and see if you are having this. Then we'll proceed from there. So I'll give you like about, say, three minutes. By 5.53, before 5.53, let's start sending our done, done, done in, okay? Okay, well done, Matthew. Well done, Priscilla. Oh, Daniel, well done. Well done. I hope you are getting exactly what you can see on the screen. Interestingly, those of you that are done, you can try to change colors, you know, try your hands about, I mean, around some things there. So this solid, solid is saying that the color we want or the way we want the color that we're going to choose to display is going to be in solid form, solid color. So that's why you are seeing this line like this. So there's no breakage. There's no line, I mean, breaking in the border, in the border line. So it's a solid color and it's not, um, um, it's not, it's not faded, so to say. Okay, so that's what this solid means. Of course, we know this, this is the border. We're telling the style um, to add a border to your, to your style, telling HTML to add the border to your style here. That's here, okay? And what's the width of the border? In this width of the border here, and these two peaks, pixel that you're seeing here defines the thickness of the border. So those of you that are done, you can change your thickness to maybe five, 10, and see what is happening to the borders, okay? Change the first one to five, change the second one to 10, change the third one to like 20, and see what happens on your, on your screen, yeah. Well done, Naomi. Well done, Abola. Well done, Esther. So quickly, just make those changes and see um, the effects on your own browser. All right. Great, Bisola. Well done. So you can see how you can just manipulate, you know, those things like that. So. Okay, yeah, the border got bigger, of course, or thicker. <laughs> All right, so let's proceed. Um, or let me just wait for some people. <laughs> Bella Blue. <laughs> Interesting, right? Okay, okay. So, well done, guys. All right, so we can see how we can manipulate set borders, change the color. You know, make it bigger, make it thinner, make it whichever way you want to make it, all right? So, okay, let's try this. So just after that done, you can change one of the borders to zero pixel. Change to zero pixel and see what's 
happens there. Give me a minute while you're doing that. Just give me a minute. But that has disappeared. <laughs> yes, well done, Pusola. The border will disappear because you've, you've said that the thickness of the border is zero. Yeah. So that's how you can manipulate, you know, your border and border style. All right. So we'll move forward. Um, let's keep going. Let's keep going. It's getting more interesting now. Yeah. So... In HTML, colors can also be specified using the RGBX, HSL, RGBA, and HSLA values. You know, we've been using um, the color names already, but this time around, we want to try to see how we can also uh, code colors. Colors can be coded, you know, you can code the colors, or some colors are represented by, um, numbers so the r like we're going to still see the r means red in this rgb the r means red the g means green and the b means blue and we all know that most of our colors different colors that we have today is a mixture of red green and blue all right red green and blue those are what we i mean that are usually used to mix colors to get the different colors that we have in different proportions as case may be. So as you can see in this first line, we see that we have 255, 99, and 71. The 255 value belongs to the red. You can see that the color also, the color itself is almost red. All right. It's a shade of red. And then the green is 99 and the blue is 71. So just chill, eh? Don't. It's not something complex, but just chill, okay? And we can see the next one, which is the exa X. This X indicates hexadecimal, so to say, hexadecimal. The first two also as, um, sorry, just trying to, so this, this is an hexadecimal code, all right? Then this is HSL. HSL means the H is for highlights, S is for saturation, I think the, the L is for luminance or so, or light or something. Yeah. So you can see there are sometimes um, specified in numbers or percentages. Okay. So color values. Now let's look at color values now. Okay. The following two div elements have their background colors set with RGBA and HSLA values, which add an alpha channel to the color. Now, the alpha channel means transparency or opacity. So some of us might have heard those words before. I mean, transparency is, is simple to understand. We all know what, when we say something is transparent, that's transparency. Opacity is also talking about transparency in terms of graphics and, and coding like this. You may, not, you may not be seeing anything like transparent or something, you control the opacity. That's what and that means. Okay. So in your code, um, copy this line of code that you have before. Okay. Can you just ah, this will be too okay. Um, let's use this to no. Okay. Now in your code, let's do this. Sorry. What we are going to do now, we're going to use. I want, to, I want to be able to implement something. Okay, can you quickly type out these codes, please? Let's quickly type it out. Let's quickly type it out. So when we are done typing it out, I'm also going to try to type it out somewhere. Let's see. So just take your time to type out this code. I'll also be typing it out here at my hand. 
yeah, as fast as you can. Okay, so who is done? All right, Musala is done. Who else is done? Musala seems to be very fast. Who else is done? So we can, can explain this to us. So the following two developments have their background colors set to RGBA and HSLA values, which add an alpha channel to the color. Here we have 50% transparency. So this last part of it is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is what is used to specify 
their transparency or the opacity. The opacity here is now at 50%. So if you look at the, um, the last two lines of code, HSL, HSL and um, RGB, which is, let's look at the first line of code, RGB, okay, red, blue, red, green, and blue, then HSL, they have another version of themselves where you can now specify the transparency of that color. And that's what we've seen here in the RGBA and the HSLA. HSL and RGB as another version of themselves where you can specify transparency or the alpha channel. And that's what this A here represents. Well done, Esther. Well done, Esther, and blessing. Well done. So if we look at our uh, results, and that's this is what we have here. They are all like same colors from different um, color codes that we've, we've uh, specified. Can say that first one is the same color, second, same color, third, the same color. However, the fourth and the fifth one are also the same color, but having a 50% transparency. These two below here, they are not a diff they are not different colors or something. So they are they have only we have only specified their transparency here. That's 50%, that's 0 0.5 transparency. All right. Well done, Naomi. So we we'll need to we're, we're going to go on. So at least what you know right now, like from this place, is that the red is 255. The G, which is green, is 99, and the blue is 71, and the transparency A is 0 0.5, indicating 50% transparency. Same applies to the HSLA as well, all right? So an RGB color value represents, it's what I've been saying, red, green, and blue, light source. An RGBA color value is an extension of RGB with an alpha channel, that is opacity. In HTML, a color can be specified as an RGB value using this formula below, which is what we've been saying. Please, if there's a question, please just type it in the chat window as I speak. That's what we've been saying. So your first number represents the value of the red, second number represents the value of the green, and the third number represents the value of the blue. So each parameter, red, green, and blue, defines the intensity of the color with a value between zero and 255. In our code that we've seen, we have seen that 255, 255 I mean, that we gave to, green and to red, is the highest value for that red and the highest value for all three colors. And that's why the color you're looking at is more red than any other color, all right? And this means that there are two, five, six times, um, wow, two, five, six, two, five, times two, five, six, times two, five, six possible colors. And that is, uh, this is 16 million, right? 16 million, 777,216 possible colors that you can form out of the RGB color code. All right. So for example, RGB uh, 255,0,0 is displayed as red, which means red as the highest value, while the green and the blue, the value is zero. That's the lowest value they can, they can have, which means we are going to have red colors anyway, all right? And that's what we are saying here on this part of this paragraph. I hope we understand. I'm not talking jargon, so please, if you understand, just um, say yes in the chat window. And if you don't, please say no. If you understand, please say yes. If you don't, please say no. I'm glad that many of us are understanding it. Great. Okay, Mr. Agwala, what part don't you understand? Can you just tell me what you don't understand so that I can go back for you?
please, if we don't understand, let's simply say no, and then tell me which parts you don't understand so that I can quickly explain the particular parts you don't understand. Do you mean this, okay, the previous slide, Abby? Is it this one or this one? So which one, Mr. Agwala? The last one. This one, am I correct? Please say yes if I'm correct. Okay, great, thank you. <clears throat> so let me go back and explain this. An RGB color value represents red, green, and blue light. Okay? It represents red, green, and blue light source. Remember, I initially told us that most colors that we see today, all the, in fact, actually all the colors you see today, except for white and black, I think, um, they are a mix of red, green, and blue colors in different proportions, okay? So, however, this RGB color code that we are looking at as an alpha channel, which is like an extension of the RGB, that alpha channel determines the transparency of that color. It determines what? The transparency of the color. And that's what we've seen here, okay? Because of this 0 0.5 that is indicating the alpha channel, of this RGB, we're having a transparent color. This color is actually the same as this color, but because we've added this 50% transparency, the 0 0.5 transparency to it is now appearing to be lighter. It's not like it's lighter, it's only transparent, okay? It's only transparent. If you put anything behind it, you will see this, you will see this thing, uh, you see an image of the thing as well. So HTML color specifies can be specified as an RGB value using this formula. This is the formula here. So what we are saying here is that the first number, this first number here, represents the value for red. Mm -hmm. How much red you want the color to be? How much red you want it to be? That's what it, see, it does. Now, the second number represents the value for green. That's how much green you want in your color. While the third number represents the value for blue, how much blue you want in your color. Now, I want us to do this. You know, we've written this code, this code, this first three line of code, okay? What I want you to do now is that, can you reduce the value of red to like say 70, okay? And increase the value of green to 255. Then save your work and, and view it in the browser, let's see what happens. I'm also going to do the same right now, right here. So what I'm asking you to do is change, what is this thing, Change the value of red here, change it to maybe 90, let's change it to 90, okay? And change the value of um, green to 255. Leave, um, can change the blue to 70, all right? Then you save your work. Yeah, green is dominant, exactly. Green will be dominant. So if I look at my browser now, okay, you will see that it's more green. The reason that is, is because our green is of greater value. Our green is of the highest value here. Do you get now? So if we take this green now, this thing will stop appearing. Oh God. So if we take the green part of it and we make it, let me make mine to be 25, okay? And I save my work. You can see the color already changes here. So if I go back to my browser, I use it, it has changed the color. I have brought my green down. You know that I've taken most of the green away. So I have my blue and red being mixed together to give me this color. So I hope um, this is making sense to us now, okay? So Mr. Agbola, I hope you're getting it now. Mm -hmm. Do you understand the slide now, Mr. Agbola? Oh, great. 
I'm glad you do now. Okay, so let's continue. Same applies here. So what they are really telling us here is that, so zero to 255 means you have 256 values that you can use. Multiply by 256, so this is red, 256 value of red, multiply by 256 value of the green, multiply by 256 value of the blue, which gives us 16,777, um, 16, 16,777,216 possible colors. As you're changing the values, the colors are changing. So that's what we are saying here. For example, if you have 255,0,0, it means you want red color. If you have 0, 0,255,0, it means you want the green color only. If you have 0, 0, 0,255, it means you want only blue color. So it applies for all of them like that. What you need to have in mind is that the lowest value is zero, while the highest value is 255. The lowest value is zero, the highest value is 255. <laughs> Can we have zero, zero, zero? Please try it. So yeah, let's try zero, zero, zero. I like, I like when we ask this kind of questions. Let's try zero, zero, zero. Of course, what you are saying is that you don't want any color, B. But let's see what our browser will do if we use zero, zero, zero. Okay. So zero, zero, zero will give us black. To give us black. I think that's what it's going to give us, black. Refresh. So that's it. So black is usually um, um, default color, so to say. Yes, to give you black color. Okay. Thank you for that question, Esther. <laughs> Interesting question. Yes, black color. So you can manipulate, you know, change colors, change the values to different things, change transparency value. Whenever you want to add transparency, just make sure you add the A to it. So your browser knows that you want to add transparency to it, All right? So let's proceed. Another example, RGB, I mean, I've, I've said this already, so it, they're just giving us more example of it. So to display white, now listen to this very well now, listen to this. To display white, set all color parameters to 255. Very good question asked by Esther, where she said, can we do 0, 0, 0? Yes. Now, if 0, 0, 0 gives us black, it means 255, 255, 255 will give us white. So it's like a color range, all right? If everything is zero, it's black. If everything is um, 255, 255, it means it is white, all right? So you can try that and you see what it gives to you. Change all the values to 255, 255, 255, 255. What you'll be having is going to be white, okay? Good, good question, Esther. Yeah, well done, Naomi. That's good. So it's good to try these things there. Eh? All right, I believe we can move forward here. Remember, if you have questions, please put it in the chat window. I will see it and we will treat it. So these are examples that you can try um, at your leisure time. You can try changing the values to any of these values and you see what it gives us. So shades of gray, welcome. Shades of gray, shades of gray, shades of gray. Shades of gray are often defined using equal values of all three parameters. So we see here, once you want to do any kind of shades of gray, please try it, or try it now. Change values to 60, 60, 60, or 100, 100, 100, and you see the different shades of grays that you can, you can um, have. One key thing to note, shades of gray, are often defined using equal value of all three parameters. So if I say, paint this thing in gray color, you need to use the red, the same value as the green, same value as the blue. That's what will give you a gray color or shades of any gray color. Okay, I hope we get that. So you can try it at your hand and see what develops. RGBA color values. 
remember I told us that the A represents the alpha channel, which gives you transparency. RGBA color values are an extension of RGB color values with an alpha channel, which specifies the opacity for a color. In other words, we specify the transparency for a color. An RGBA value is specified with this code, this um, formula that you're seeing here. So you have the, you specify this first, RGBA, followed by red, green, blue, and alpha. In other words, the first number represents your red, second number represents your green, the third number represents your blue, and the last number will represent your alpha, um, how much you want the transparency to be. The alpha parameter is the number between 0, 0.0, which is fully transparent, to 1.0, which is non, not transparent at all. Okay, let's take note of that. It's from 0 to 1. That's what they are saying. So 0, 0.0 to 1.0. That's what you can use to represent your alpha channel. 0, 0.0 means it is entirely transparent, so you won't see anything. For 0. Point, I mean, 1.0 means it is not transparent at all. You will see the color there tick. Okay. So experiment by using this. We've done this already. So let's just move forward. <clears throat> if you have questions, please put it in the chat window so that I can see it. So this is an example of uh, what we've talked about here. These are examples. You can try that um, at your leisure time. All right, please ensure you do all these tests at your leisure time, all right? So it's getting more interesting. We are here, the hexadecimal color. Please pay attention now, the same, um, thing applies here also, but pay attention. Hexadecimal, so is there a question here? There is no opacitive, <laughs> yes, no positive values for uh, hexadecimal. There's no positive value for X colors, color values. The rest part is RGB values, from RGB value, correct, yeah. So here, your hexadecimal color values is specified with this code you are seeing here. So RR means red, GG means green, BB means blue. Why they are making it double or a pair is because it has two, two numbers that, or two numbers or two alphabets, or an, a number and an alf alphabet that really depicts the value for the colors, okay? I don't know if that makes any sense, but we'll get to see it later. So where RR stands for green, GG stands for green, uh, and RR stands for red, GG stands for green, and BB stands for blue. Hexadecimal integers specifies the component of the color. In HTML, the color can be specified using the hexadecimal value in form of RR. I mean, there's, take note, there's always that hashtag there, a pound sign in front. Very important. You can't. You should not omit it. If you omit it, you won't get anything. Okay. So that's how it is. Um, so of course we can see the values here, same as we have in, with the RGB. Same applies here. It's from zero to um, two five five. All right, zero to two five five. Let's just take note of that. All right. So if you don't want to use RGB, you can use X. So for example, ash, I mean, pound sign FF0000 is displayed as red because red is set to its highest value of F, F, all right? And the other two, green and blue is set to 00. Another example is 00FF00 is displayed as green, okay? Sorry, I'm trying to check something. All right, let me let me um, make us let me read here again so that we understand very well. So here we have said that for for RGB, the lowest value is zero, and the highest value is two five five. But for hexadecimal, the lowest value is f. I mean zero zero, and the highest value is ff. 
this is not O, it is zero, okay? And that's the lowest value. And then we have FF. So from zero, you go to A, B, C, D, E, F. It's not like you're going from zero, one, two, three, whatever, no. From zero, zero, you go to A, A, B, B, E, F, F, and, and so on like that. A, A, B, B, C, C, E, F, like that. I hope you understand what I'm saying now. For RGB, the lowest value is zero, and the highest value is 255. For hexadecimal, the lowest value is 00, zero and the highest value is FF. Please, let's not forget and let's not mix them up. So that's why we see here, for example, if you want to display red, FF, which is the highest value for any, any uh, for hexadecimal, and then the rest are expressed 0000, zero, 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 which means you only want red, and that's what it will give to you, just red. Okay. And if you want white, like we've seen here, you set all the colors, the RGB to the highest, to their highest value, and that gives you white. If you want black, you set them to their lowest value, and that will give you black all through. I hope this makes sense. So the same concept applies for RGB. It also applies here for X colors as well. Please, if you have questions, put it in the chat window. I hope we are getting it and we're understanding, Chao. Please, oh. If you don't understand, just put it there. Don't worry. I will explain. I will take time to explain and make you understand better. When I mean, you ask, and I even explain again, others will also gain from it. So please, let's not hesitate from asking a question. Again, there is no stupid question. I will answer the question. There is no stupid questions. All right. So let's proceed. So. Experiment by mixing different values at your own end. Um, let me see. So you can do this. What I would say you should do, um, look up to my own screen here. So I'm going to specify using uh, this place, this second line, what we did here. Hmm? Is that what we did here? I think that's what we did here actually. Okay, it's a value for numbers up to, so where would the number end? So, oh God, I hate this thing that is appearing. I'm going to turn it off. So we can see here, this X, X um, expression, I mean, it's X, hexadecimal specification of color here. Okay, so you can choose to change the values if you want. The more you change the values, the more, I mean, the color will change, okay? I can change this to zero, zero. The color will change. I hope you can see the color changing. Let me run it in my, in my browser. I just hope we are seeing it. So you can see this color changing here. So if I change this to BB, and I change this to one, two, so so you can see that the colors are changing here so again from zero zero up to ff so zero zero one one two two one two whichever way you want to mix the colors is up to you so so this means that for the x the highest number is what is this nine and you mean 99? No, 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 no. Let's not, let's not get confused. Though. Okay. Okay, when we say the domain digits that it can accept, yes, 99. That's the highest digits it can accept. Okay. 99, yes, that's it, I did it. So you, you can say from 00, 0 to 99. Once you get to 99, you start from A, A, B, B, C, C, and so on like that. Or B, let's even try something first. Let me change this to A. Did it even change? Let me say A, B, A, E. 
So you see within this green, this thing. So you can manipulate like that, all right? Uh, Esther, it is zero, zero digits. The zero, zero is in digits, not alphabet. Okay, the zero, zero is in digits, it's not in alphabet. Okay, the only alphabet you can have within this hexadecimal is from A to F. And the digit you can have is from zero to nine. Okay, I hope we all understand that. As time goes on, we will, as we continue to code, we'll continue to understand. When I'm coding, I usually use hexadecimal, mostly. Mostly, I usually use hexadecimal. It's just my own style of coding. I, I, because there's no, for me, I feel um, it's easy for me to code like that anyway. That's how I started. So I'm used to using hexadecimal um, than the other ones. Yeah. So for the other one, RGBA, I, I, I usually don't make my colors transparent because when I'm designing, instead of me making a color transparent, I'll just make the entire object to be transparent as I, as I want. But most times I don't get to make colors transparent anyway because of my own way of the design. My, my way of design is the kind of design we call mini, minimalistic designs. That's what I usually do. So one minute, please. Uh, all right, I'm back. So let's see, let's go on. So shades of gray, of course, same rules apply. Use equal values for all the colors. Use equal values to give you shades of gray, different shades of gray, all right? Now, HSL and HSLA. HSL stands from, for hue, saturation, and lightness. Let me explain to us very well so that we kind of understand. But some of us may not understand what hue is, or what saturation is, or what light is, lightness is. U means like a shade. How would I put it now? It's like a shade of color over something. All right. It's like a shade of color over something. Saturation is how, how, uh, how what's that word now? How concentrated a particular color is. Okay. Maybe it's more blue. Like in your photo, photography now, if you want colors to be popping, you want colors to pop you increase the saturation of that photo. So the, all the red will become more red, more red. The blues become more blue. The green becomes more green. That's what saturation does. Then of course, lightness, light, the light that your color has. That's what lightness is. So HSL, of course, HSLA, we all know what that means, which means there's an option to make that color transparent. So when you want to make a color transparent, you use RGBA or HSLA. Don't forget, if you need to add transparency to your color, use RGBA or HSLA. In HTML colors, in HTML, a color can be specified using the hue, saturation, and lightness in this form. Of course, again, the first number will be, the first value will be what? The hue, represent the hue. The second value represents the saturation and the Third value represents the lightness. Okay, so let's move on. Now the hue is a degree on the color wheel from zero to 360. These are things that we ask us in our quizzes. The hue has a value from zero to 360. Zero is red, 120 is green, and 240 is blue, and so on like that. Saturation, is a percentage value. Zero means it's a shade of gray, and 100% means it's full color, all right? Lightness is also a percentage value. Zero is black, 100 is white, okay? You can experiment by mixing those colors together. Give me a minute, please. Okay, I'm back. 
All right, so um, I think we have an example of that here. Where is that our slide? It's plenty, just, okay, hold on. I think it's here, 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 yeah. So this is HSL. Remember the first number, which is the U, doesn't have percentage, or doesn't have percentage. So don't forget, in case I bring it out in your, your, um, your quiz, the first number in HSL, which represent the hue, does not, is not specified in percentage from zero to 360. And then the saturation is specified in percentage, light also is specified in percentage. Of course, under the, the where, you, where you need the transparency, you can see it's specified from 0, 0.0 to 1.0, all right? So let's not forget, please, I want to beg us, let's go back and read these slides once I upload. Always try to go back and read them once I upload them. So let's move on. So you can study this, change the different values when you are, when you are um, revising after the class, change these different values for you to see the different colors that you can get, okay? All right, so. Now we are looking at saturation. Okay, hold on, where is you? Okay. Saturation can be described as the intensity of a color. Okay, the intensity of a color. 100% is pure color, which means the color will be more colored. Okay, no shades of gray. Pure color, no shades of gray at all. So 50% is 50% gray but you can still see the color. So the lesser, you, the, the lower you come, the, the more gray, grayish your color will be. So that's why when you want to turn a photo to black and white, you take down the saturation all the way down. So it becomes black and white. What you are doing is that you're adding more of gray color to your photo. Same applies here. When you cut it down by 50%, it means you're adding 50% gray color to that color. All right. Yes, question, please don't hesitate to ask. But you can still see the color. Yeah. Oh, zero percent is completely gray, which means there is no saturation, no presence of any color other than gray, which we usually call black and white. Okay. So you don't, you don't see any color at all. Let's move on. So lightness, the lightness of a color can be described as how much light you want to give the color. How much light you want to give the color. Where zero means there's no light at all, and that is black. 50% means that there's a 50% light. So it's either dark or light. So 100% means there's what? Full light, full light. In other words, we say it is white, all right? Let's not forget that. If you're, if you're looking at the lightness, zero means there's no light at all. Everything is black. So it's like when Nepal takes your light and then, <laughs> that, that when did you join this class? Where did you get lost to? <laughs> Where did you get lost? Let me see if it's not too far. Uh, Dada Lubusayo. Where did you get lost? Can you quickly tell us? Please type it in the chat window while, I'm, while I continue. Okay, so how we get this part? You know, zero means there's no light. 50% uh, means there's 50% um, light, okay? Another percent means everything is light, which is white, okay? So let's continue. So shades of gray. Shades of gray are often defined by setting the hue and saturation to zero. The hue and the saturation to zero and adjusting the light from zero to 100 to get darker or lighter shade. So for shades of gray under HSL, you will set the hue, the H to zero, and then the saturation also to 0%. That way, 
it gives you gray color. And the percentage of the L specifies how light or dark the gray will be. I hope that makes sense. So when you are, when you are revising, just play around with different numbers. Play around with different numbers to help you see what it's like. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you very much, Jada. See what it's like, okay? So let's move on. So of course, we all understand what the, the alpha channel is, the transparency of HSL, which now becomes HSLA, all right? It's an extension of HSL. HSLA is an extension of HSL, which tells us that there's an opportunity for us to make it transparent or not, okay? And I've told us that transparency is set between 0, 0.0 to 1.0. 0, 0 0.0 means it's fully transparent and 1.0 means it's not transparent at all. So you set your own values by yourself. So this is just example, you can experiment around. You can also try to use this to mix colors if you want. These are there so that you can try them at your own leisure time. Please let's ensure that we do all these tests. So we're going to end there today. Tomorrow, we'll continue with HTML styles. Okay, and that's where we'll start to write some CSS. Now, this is not the CSS course. I mean, the CSS module for this course. But there's no way you are studying HTML that you won't write some CSS code. And the truth is we've already started writing CSS code with our style attributes, okay? So what will happen is tomorrow, we then begin to do more of CSS before, by the time we start the CSS uh, module itself, which is, which is going to take us more advanced into it, um, we'll then enjoy it more. But tomorrow we'll introduce ourselves to CSS. That's cascading, cascading style sheets. Okay, cascading style sheet. That's what it's called. That's what CSS means. All right. So we've talked about colors. We've talked about um, uh, was was that again? Quotes and um, citations. You know, a couple of things that we've talked about today. I think we did about three chapters today, and I want to please plead with us. Let's go back and read them through. Again, you can reach me. We talk about comments, yes. You can reach me during the course of the day and I'll be able to um, assist you with it. Now, for those of us who came late to class, I have shown those who came in early how to upload your work in the Google Classroom and submit. So please, once I load up this recording, please, 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 please ensure you go and watch it so that you know how you load up um, your, your, your code and submit. All right. So let that um, be noted. Please, let's always try to be punctual in class. I know you have recordings, but recordings may not be like when you are actually in class. Okay, so please let's always be punctual in class and God bless you all in Jesus name. Before we close, is there any question at all? Thank you, Busola. Is there any question for many of us? Any question, any question? So if there are no question, I think we can call it a day. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Sander. I think we can call it a day tonight. Go and rest. Tomorrow morning, carry your carry the slide again and read through. And just, just practicalize most of these things. Eh? Play around it. Play around it. Don't be afraid to make errors. Just play around it. And then you see that you enjoy it more. All right. Thank you, Matthew. So um Tomorrow, we meet again, same time, 8 p.m. And um, God help us. 
will get to understand much better in Jesus' name. So I pray for you that all that you've learned will find roots in you and you will understand much more. By the time you even go back to read through, you understand much more in Jesus' name. Amen. So God bless you. Thank you all. And see you in class tomorrow. Bye-bye.